Today we shall study about rings, fields and polynomials. Just to recap what groups were, a group is a finite or infinite set of elements along with a binary operation that satisfy the following four properties, closure, associativity, identity and inverse. Abelian groups were groups that were also commutative. We shall define an additional object. A ring is an abelian group with a second binary operation that is associative, is distributive over the abelian group operation and has an identity element. So for example, if the second binary operation is denoted by plus with a circle around it, then associativity simply means that A plus b plus c is equal to a o plus b o plus c and distributive over the abelian group operation simply means that a o plus b o dot c is equal to a o plus b O dot A O plus C. There are many examples of rings. For example, the set of integers form a ring. The primary operation is simply addition and the secondary operation is multiplication. Rings can be both commutative and non-commutative. Examples of commutative rings include the ring of integers and the ring of polynomials. An example of a non-commutative ring is the set of n cross n real matrices with n greater than or equal to 2. Why is this non-commutative? In general, a times b is not equal to b times a and therefore it's a non-commutative ring. We also define what a field is. A field is a commutative ring where we can divide by all non-zero elements of the ring. In other words, all non-zero elements of the ring have inverses. Some examples of fields are the set of real numbers, the set of integers mod p when p is prime. The primary operation would be addition just like how we saw in groups. And the second, secondary operation would be multiplication. Note that every non-zero element has an inverse. The question is why isn't the set of integers modulo n when n is composite a field? I'll let you think about this for a moment. We have already seen the answer to this. Another example of fields is the set of polynomials with coefficients in Zp where p is prime modulo an irreducible polynomial. Just like how when you do mod p where p is prime you get a field from a ring of integers, the ring of polynomials when you do modulo an irreducible polynomial gives us a field. I will not elaborate too much on this, but some suggested advanced readings are topics related to polynomial rings, polynomial factorizations, and finite field over polynomials. We will now discuss some fun facts. You may have heard of the two-man rule. If I have some top secret information that I want protected, and I want to make sure that no one person can open and read this top secret information, what could I do? I could put two locks on the safe with the document in, in question and give one of the keys to one person and the other key to another person. Therefore, in order to open the safe, both of them need to be present and only then they can read the contents of whatever is there in the safe. 
But can we achieve something like this electronically? The answer is yes. And the answer to this question is Shamir Secret Sharing, introduced by Adi Shamir. The idea is as follows. I have a secret S and let the secret S be an element of ZP when P is prime. Now what I do is, I pick a random element in ZP, call it S1 and I give it to the first person. Now to the second person, I compute S minus S1 and let that be S2 and give it to the second person. So more formally, if S1 inverse is the additive inverse of S1, then I compute S group operation S1 inverse and call that S2 and I give it to the second person. You can actually show that neither party gets any information about S. In other words, if I just look at the distribution of S1, then it is uniformly distributed in ZP. And if I just look at the distribution of S2 alone, then that is also uniformly distributed in ZP and has no bearing whatsoever on the value of S. And therefore, to each of these individuals separately, the value of S is completely hidden. I'm not being very formal over here, but this statement can be precisely quantified and proved. This particular scheme is called a two out of two secret sharing scheme. That is, no one party learns S and two parties together can recover S. This scheme can actually be generalized to something known as K out of N secret sharing. That is, I can distribute a secret among N participants such that no K of them learn any information about the secret, but any K plus one of them together can recover the secret completely. Now this variation of secret sharing uses finite fields over polynomials. If you are interested, I would highly recommend reading more about Shamir secret sharing.